corner, guys. I'm just in my garage and doing a little testing on my vacuum stuff. Had a couple of gaskets that were bad. And, um, some of my vacuum stuff was questionable whether, you know, it was my stuff that was not pulling properly or the units were, um, you know, leaking. So every so often I like to do a test of all my equipment so I know what I have I'm using is pulling down properly and there's no leaks. Um, that's what I'm doing here today. So I got my vacuum pump. This is the old vacuum pumps I used to use in JB7s. I had a couple of these in my truck for years. And I got the new style one, but um, what I like to do usually to check the oil is I put the vacuum gauge on there direct. And, you know, if it pulls down under 50, you know the oil's still good. So that's a good little tip to, um, that's what I do. But I'm just kind of checking the stuff. I had to put new gaskets in this little um, angle piece here. The problem with these is they take... They don't take the quarter-inch gaskets. They take the 3 16 gaskets, which are smaller. I don't know if you can see them or not. But the 3 16 And then you got the quarter-inch ones, which are fatter. Now, a regular hose, uh, refrigerant hose, will take the quarter-inch gaskets. So I'm just going to do play around with it a little bit. Maybe take a couple of shots with the video here and there and share it with you guys. All right. Yeah, I got this little blue hose here. It's a little vacuum hose set up. And, you know, I'm in the 20s, so I'm good with that. You know, that's working good. I'd rather use the rigid one. Oh, that's okay. Now, I know that adapter works. Basically, what I did was I took a little... 1 8 street elbow. I got a couple of these adapters here. See a lot of guys that buy these adapters and they'll just uh, screw a gauge, a compound gauge in there for quick access to um, checking things. It's basically um, quarter inch by 1 8. It's 1 8. This is a 1 8. I got some quarter inch ones here too. So I want to throw in quarter inch, but it's, it's a little bit bigger. That's a nice, why I like this apparatus here is because you can use the regular quarter inch gaskets, which you use in there. You know, this one takes the 3 16 gaskets. It's kind of wimpy. If you look at them gaskets in there, I don't know if you can see them or not, but they're, they're pretty wimpy. You can see what some of the old gaskets that I took, in, I took out that, were, that weren't pulling down right, how nasty they get, see? That's why I like to check things, so I know if I'm using this out in the field, I know it's good. That one's fine, under 20. That's good. Alright guys, myself, I like to have a little shut off before the vacuum gauge. So, obviously, it's not vacuum rated, but I'm pulling down under 20, so I'm good with that. And I checked them other two, and um, I'm pulling down like 24, something like that. You know, obviously the best, the best core tools are these right here, the acting on. But, um, I got two of these. And then I got the, um, C and D's. And then I got the 516 one. But what I'm saying is, say if you got this on, on your unit here, okay, you're going to let gas, uh, the refrigerant back, you pull the refrigerant into the condenser. Now you're going to let the refrigerant back in. You know, and your vacuum gauge is hooked up. So what I like to be able to do is if I could shut this little valve off, I'm not pushing all that refrigerant into my gauge. Um, you don't want to get too much oil in this vacuum pump, because then you've got to clean it, this vacuum gauge. So that's why I like to have that little shut off. So if I'm reintroducing refrigerant into a system that's been pulled into the condensing unit, after I pull the vacuum, you know, I'll shut this little valve off, boom. Then I'll you release the refrigerant back into the uh, line set, and then I'll take my gauge off. So that's the deal there. I'm in the 20s with it. I'm good with that. There you go, just so you can see. I'm not a big fan of this little angle piece because of the small gaskets in it. But if you did it like this, 
put that right up against the side. It's basically, well, that other one does come out a little bit less. Sometimes you need this angle, depends on where you're located, you know. But I got three different ones there, and they're all good for pulling down into under 20 ranges on vacuum. So I could use any of those three that I want. You know, coming off my um, Appian Schrader removers once I put my half inch holders on there. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, pump this tank down. It's a new tank that I had bought. I like to keep these for, you know, if I'm going to transfer some refrigerant, if i got to work on a unit or something, I like to have, i got a couple of these uh, 30 pounders. i got some 50s, but I like to have these, these extras hanging around just in case I need them. And I got all my stuff hooked up. I pulled it down on a good vacuum. I know it's pulling down good. And I took my uh, gauge off of there to get back to atmospheric pressure. And we'll uh, pull it down. See how long it takes. I'm still sucking in here. Well, these aren't new. This isn't new stuff. This is all stuff I've been using for a while. So put the gauge back on there. We'll, uh, we'll run it. Wait a minute. And get it ready. We'll start it up and see how long it takes. I just want to mention that this stuff right here is the key for a good vacuum. Uh, Nylog, put a little bit on your connections. And, um, you know, tighten these up as tight as you can with your fingers. I wouldn't recommend you use. I wouldn't use channel locks on it, but as long as you make sure that they're Nylog and they're really tight as you can get them with your fingers, you should be okay. Because if there's one connection that's loose or you got a bad gasket, and one other thing too, when you got this on, you want to make sure that you can shut these off. Because once you pull a vacuum, you know, on your system, you got to shut these off. Because, you know, you got your cores removed, obviously, when you're working on the system with this type of setup. And there's the core remover tools. So you'd have your Schrader valves out. There's no Schrader valves in this unit. Because this is just a tank, a recovery tank, just for testing purposes. All right, so we should be ready to go here. Let's we'll start it up. Make sure all my connections are tight. I'm gonna pull it down. That's 500 microns, 3 minutes and 21 seconds.
I said, you know, this, these are old gaskets in here and stuff, but at least I know this thing's still pulling down. That was my main goal for the day. And I also got my little 3.8. My little 3.8 holes. In case I'm going to use my Testo. Sometimes, you know, when you're pulling a vacuum, you can't always use these core removers. Some units, it won't allow you to use the regular hoses. And um, sometimes I use my 570 to pull a vacuum or uh, Testo 550, whatever you guys have. But the 557 and the 570, you got the 3.8 connection for pulling a vacuum, which does help a little bigger. Alright guys, hope I didn't bore you with my stuff here today, but just kind of playing around here and some of this stuff I got. It's always good to test your equipment, make sure that it's it's good to use out in the field. And it's still pulling down, you know. I probably should have changed the oil in this pump, but that's old oil in there, it's still pulling down. It's a good idea to change the oil every every time you pull a vacuum, but uh, just for testing and testing the stuff, I'm good. The vacuum pump I got in my truck that I carry all the time. This one's in my garage. Um, it's the new JB, new style JB. I change the oil on that all the time. Yeah, guys, just some of the gaskets that I found that were bad. I don't know if you can see that or not, but. And bad gaskets. This one was really bad. I'll kill your vacuum right there. Alright guys, I'm still dropping there on my vacuum, so... You know, I feel confident with these hoses and this apparatus that the gaskets are still good inside these Apion hoses. And, um, you know, I could pull a decent vacuum under 500 microns with this stuff for uh, working out in the field. The key is to get these tight. You know, I wouldn't put channel locks on. It works fine just by tightening it up by hand. It's still dropping. Memorial Day fun. This guy, this, this guy was a new tank, and that's why I had to pull this vacuum on it. But, just to check all my stuff in the meantime, it's good, good practice. She's still pulling down. I'm gonna shut all these off. I got the tank off, I'm just pulling just through the holders and out. You know, all this, all these hoses leak. Everything leaks. There ain't no way of getting around it. You know, a little leakage by all the gaskets. And, uh, and as long as we're on the 500 microns, we're good. You know. off here and I got the leak rate going now it's gonna come up some it's coming up very slowly which is good
great right here. That's the temperature, 80 psi. Um, not not 80 psi, 80 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Then the leak rate is 0.2. I like this little blue vac. It's a nice little setup. That's for sure. Microns. There's different units you can set this thing to. Also, when I first got it, it was set to um, something besides microns. When you get these, you have to make sure it's on microns. There's an alarm setting on here and a warning and all that stuff. I don't use any of that. Well, that's good. I'll shut this off and we're good to go. This tank's in a good vacuum. Whenever I need it, I'll be ready to go with it. stuff. A little pouch here for all the nylog. Um, got the blue and the red nylog in here. I got some little trade of course there. Now on the blue, you know, I got the blue in my um, Testo 5. 550 bag, 570 bag. The blue is actually not as gummy as the red. The red's like for 22, and the blue can be used for um, 410A. In this pouch, this middle pouch here, I got my three holes. And then in this back pouch, I got the two half inch hoses, and then I got my uh, my vacuum gauge and a little extra pouch up the top there. Protective pouch, I keep it in. I just put all my stuff in bags so I can grab it as needed. And when this thing's all zipped up, I can just carry it as a backpack. I usually got my veto bag. You know, veto bag and on one shoulder, this on the other shoulder, and a vacuum pump on the other hand, and I'm good to go. That's how I do my stuff. Everybody's got their own way, I guess. But for me, this works. Put all my stuff right in there. Zip it up. And boom, I'm ready to go. Right on my back. That's how I like to do it. I'm gonna zip it up and I'll be good. Everything I need for vacuum right in that bag right there.